Yo, it's a Saturday, I'm home, 6.30 chillin', surfing the internet to see what I'm feeling. Laying on blog talk, see what they dealing. Came across the barbershop, stepped into the building. Real life sports talk, real entertainment. Mike Knox really keep his ear into the pavement. Finger on the pulse of the industry, save it. You don't like the way brag, you ain't gotta say shh. Listen anyway, every Thursday, him and Corey G, tell them what you tripping on any day. Barbershop mixed with talk show, there we go. Give you the best damn show on the radio. Million dollar audience meets with your favorite host. Million dollar connection, feel the force. Most electric, most eclectic. Listen to the shows where the pros expected. Two shows a week with the A-class guest list. The best damn show on the radio. Check Yo, this. The best damn show on the radio. Yo, it's the best damn show on the radio. Yo, yo, it's the best damn show on the radio. Yo, it's the best damn show on the radio. Yo, it's the best damn show on the radio. Yo, it's the best damn show on the radio. Yo, it's the best damn show on the radio. Yo, it's the best damn show and radio. that he has check out the website he's going to come on and discuss a little bit it's the prodigy athletic institute.com and just a real quick mission statement for the prodigy athletic institute the mission the mission is to benefit the physical mental moral and character development of youth by providing programs and activities to youth 8 to 17 years of age regardless of their ability or financial status the mission is accomplished by providing deserving, unserved, or underserved, historically disadvantaged, at-risk, and high-risk youth mentoring, training, and assistance in finding a life track that increases their chance of staying out of trouble, achieving academic and personal success, then attending a four-year college or university, and giving back to those less fortunate to themselves. So this man played in the NBA. He's giving something back to the community. We here at the Best Damn Show on Radio would like to to introduce to you, former NBA tech, 12 years, if I recall correct, Tracy Murray to the show. We welcome Tracy Murray to the show. That means stand on your feet for Tracy Murray! Get up, fellas. What's going on, man? I appreciate the intro. I appreciate the intro. That was tight. Yeah, yeah. This is what we do here, man. So first off, first off, you know, for those that don't know, again, this is Tracy Murray, former NBA vet, three-point killer. Man, I, I know you're doing a little NBA, WNBA coaching right now. Man, give us up to date. What, what's going on with you right now, brother? What's going on? Well, shoot, I got a couple of things going on, man. Um, we got the uh, – I was coaching at the Tulsa Shock in the second half of the season. A good friend of mine, Teresa Edwards, ended up getting the uh, head coaching job halfway through the season when they let Coach Richardson, Nolan Richardson, go. So she needed uh, a little bit of help, so she called uh, called me, and then uh, I showed up, and we, we tried to do the best we could to turn that around. I noticed that the energy got better with that team. They started playing harder, and then we won a few games towards the end of the season. I wish we could have had them at the beginning of the season. We would have seen a different team. Uh, but, okay. And then we have, um, you know, of course, you mentioned the Prodigy Athletic Institute. We have travel ball teams out of there, too, that we're trying to get some of these kids' exposure to uh, to the college coaches so they can be seen and, and possibly get college scholarships. And, and another thing, uh, other than – and there's two other things. Uh, UCLA Broadcasting is starting to come up, and uh, I broadcast on the radio for them, uh, men and women. And, and um, last but not least, Ball Up Street Ball. I'm the coach of the Ball Up Street Ball show. My brother is the co-executive producer of the show. So um, we try to tie Ball Up and uh, Prodigy together because we have those guys coming out and doing camps and, and stuff, you know, to help help, help the, the youth. See, we're trying to have the guys, the street ball guys, uh, do a lot of giving back also because they know what we're talking about. We all come from the same place. 
and we need to help guys, behind, you know, young men and women behind us. Okay. Now, let me ask you this. Now, I back back in the day a little bit, I did a little coaching with kids, and I always like to show them women's basketball because in my mind, you know, with guys, we, we tend to, you know, we, we tend to, you know, want to jump over people, run around people. Women's basketball to me was always more, you know, you, you had to understand the game, you had to play the game, you had to learn the set picks, you had to learn the nuances of the game. In your mind, being a former NBA player but now coaching women, would you agree that, that the women's game, you know, from, from, from a woman's standpoint, it takes more skill because you don't have the athletic ability that men have to just run, run over or jump over you? I, I have to agree with you. I have to agree that you have to be really fundamentally sound to be in the WNBA because of the fact the game is grounded. There's no one flying anywhere. So you really have to do the extra things as far as knowing what, what moves to make off the dribble, reading the defense, being able to shoot the basketball to keep the defense uh, honest. You have to be able to set screens, read read the screens, and come off of it correctly and knock down the shot. you got to be able to create for um, your teammates. You know, okay. team defense, there's a lot of stuff that, you know, you have to do uh, from a, a standpoint of just being fundamentally sound. Okay, now, speaking of your current team that you're, that you're coaching, um, Ivory Lada, is she as good as I think she is? And, and what's, her, what's her feeling from, you know, from her skill set? How much better can she get? Who was that, Liz Cambridge? Well, Liz Cambridge, well, Liz Cambridge is good, too. I was just looking at the roster. You guys – had, you know, the Rock Charles looking at had Ivory Lotta, but Liz Cameron is nice too. But I, I right, kind of, I, I was kind of a fan of Ivory Lotta. I, I can't lie. You had a crush on it. Don't lie. You had a crush. <laughs> don't even lie. You know what? We, we have a, we have a talented team. It's just that when we first got there, at least when I got there, I noticed that the confidence was gone, the spirit was broken. So the first thing we had to do was to get them to believe in themselves again. And then from that point forward, we had to push them in the right direction. And I, I think they all had talent. Yes, they were at the bottom of the league, but right. they didn't have bottom of the league talent. If they were together all year, no injuries, with the right people coaching them, I thought they could have competed on on a little bit higher level. Okay, okay. And going forward, going forward, as far as, like, the um, – this, this is just a, a personal question for me. With the NBA being out, and um, hopefully they'll be coming back soon, but with the NBA being out, and I know a lot of the WNBA teams are owned by NBA teams, has that had any effect on, on, what, on what you guys can or can't do? No, it hasn't really had anything, uh, any effects of uh, anything from the coach's standpoint, what we can do, or, or from the player okay. standpoint, the WNBA. It doesn't affect the WNBA too much. And, okay. um, but but uh, I think the guys are going to be getting back to work real soon because uh, it seems like they're sitting in there, they're actually talking, they're not just having one meeting and then, and then uh, on hiatus for another 10 days. They're actually putting back-to-back meetings together. And they're trying to narrow it down and, and get down to the to the skinnier things, and and they have to come to a happy medium. And, and, and to the players' defense, because it is a lockout, a lot of people don't know the difference. Mm-hmm. It's not a strike. A strike is when the players sit out. Uh, right. The lockout is when the owners tell you you can't come to work. So uh, you know, you just exactly. had to clear that up because a lot of fans don't really know. But but um, the the players and the, the players really have to keep a stance, a strong stance, because of, we, we gave up too much in the last lockout because we yeah, wanted to go to work. Yes, yes, we wanted to go to work, and and we agreed to a bad deal. So now we didn't look, you know, now hindsight 2020, we really didn't look out for these kids coming up as a, as a collective group. Now they're in the fight of their life because they're trying to take everything away from them. And now they, they really have to stand together and they have to stick in there, hang in there, and, and be united because uh, they can't give up what the, what the owners are trying to take from them. And, no. and speaking no. of that 99 lockout, what was the hardest part, uh, other than the obvious, which is trying to play 80 games in like, you know, with two months already missing out of the season, 82 games with two months already gone, what, what was the hardest part? Was it the mental or the physical getting back into the game after that lockout? Well, I was one of those guys that stayed in shape and we worked out every day, but 
I think the hardest thing was because it was a 50 game sprint to the championship. The hardest right. thing to it was was getting the team camaraderie, getting on the same page, and winning back to back games. And it, it was hard to do because there was so there may have been half your team that was out of shape, the other half, you know, were in shape, and the, and the coaches hadn't put all their plays in. You know, guys may have been dropping out because of short training camps. The bodies didn't get used to the workload yet. It was a lot of things. Uh, that was a grind, man. It was like triple back-to-back games that people, you know, broke down in. So the people that, that you know, worked out together during the offseason, like San Antonio worked to, worked out together during the off season, during that lockout, and it showed. When they started playing, you know, they looked like a well-oiled machine. Now, Tracy, let me ask you this. This is Mike Knox, the CEO. Um, my, I have a, my co-host Kenny Anderson was also part of the NBA in the last lockout, and um, one of the biggest things that he had alluded to, because I had asked him last week on the show, was um, how did you feel about at that time the champion San Antonio Spurs at that time? Do, do you put as an NBA player? Do you yourself put an asterisk on that, or is a championship a championship? Well, a lot of people put an asterisk on it, but uh, you know I'm not going to sit up there and a champion. To me, a championship is a championship. We still played that season, so I, I'm not going to discredit them at all. They they went out there, they worked the behinds off, and they earned it. So, you know, it's it's a, all of our fault collectively for not being ready to go. They were ready, but right. you know, so I, I can't discredit them any. Okay, and and now Stephen A. Smith did report this 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 morning on the four letter. I like to call him one of the, my founding forefathers in radio. I, I I really admire that man. I know a lot of you, some people don't like him, but I really admire his work. Um, said that you guys that, that they could be going back to work pretty soon. Now, with that being said, and I know Corey also alluded to the WNBA. You said it had nothing to do, you know, with the WNBA, which which is that lockout. Can you elaborate on that? How, why isn't it a part of the saying to this? Because there are two different labor situations. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it, the, the WNBA and the NBA, uh, there are two completely different animals. I mean, okay. you know, as far as salary, as far as uh, guaranteed contracts, so to speak, I mean, you only have so many moves that you can make in the WNBA as far as trades and stuff. There's different rules over there from a managerial standpoint than it is from the NBA. And you're right, the collective bargaining agreement is totally different than the NBA. So, um Going back to Stephen A. Smith, I love Stephen A. Smith. He keeps it real. He's honest. He's up front. I, I'm like you. I'm a fan of Stephen A. Smith. See, when I, yeah, I got, I'm I, not sure how people don't like him. You know, some of my <laughs> well, some of my fans they refer to me as the Stephen A. of, of, of wrestling. So I kind of take that to heart. Like, yeah, that's right. Call me Stephen A. But um, uh, <laughs> earlier, earlier in, the, in, in, in the conversation here, you, you did say you, you're doing um, UCLA radio now. For your for your alma mater, yeah. Um, yeah. is there an app for that for someone who may be a fan of yours? Like I know Corey is no broke back intended, being a big fan of yours. <laughs> <laughs> Listen in. Hey, and, man, I love you still at basketball coming up, man. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's it's coming up. I, I just I just hope the the guys are ready. I mean, there's been some transfers, there's been some new signings, but you know, losing Honeycutt and Lee this year. Uh, yeah. It hurt. It hurt because that's the leadership that they needed. That was the talent that they needed. These guys clearly, I didn't think, was ready for the NBA, but they were ready to leave. They didn't want to be there. So, But if they were there, I think UCLA would have been a pretty good team, a team to reckon with. But without those guys, I think we're still missing something. Well, so so who would be your favorite come out of the Pac-10? Or is that just a silly question that I just asked your ass live on radio, being that you would not dare go against UCLA? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm say, I don't, you know what? I don't know because everybody lost key players. Washington lost key players. I, I like mean, Oregon in that. I like players. Oregon in that Pac-10 this year. You know what? Oregon, oh. Oregon, they're always scrappy. They're always scrappy. Oregon's got some people. They got some transfers that came in that that can help them also. You never know what Oregon's gonna have. Um, Arizona's gonna be Arizona. Arizona. 